Welcome back everyone to another episode of the Doom series and in this video we are going to implement animated flats in our engine. Alright guys so before we get started with the actual topic of today's video I have actually changed my project structure a little bit so you can see that now we create uh, uh, we have got like two folders one is the include and one is the source and basically we have got everything inside of here so all of the include files are inside of the include folder and all the source files are inside of the source folders. Now I am also going to, uh, I have also actually changed uh, the engine to be basically a folder now instead of just a file. So inside of here you can see we have got different files for all of the different stuff that we need. And if I go ahead and go under include slash engine you can see we have got a bunch of different files here as well so the basic reason I did that was to kind of make this stuff a bit more modular and more maintainable of course this means that we have changed our make file quite a bit so inside of this you can see uh, we have now got another option in the C flags where we set the include directory to this include that we have got and when we are searching for the sources we search it inside of the uh, source directory and for the objects we have the wildcard changed here as well and we also have another wildcard here which search in the source slash engine directly because uh, we have got that those files here as well and when creating a directory we create the engine directory here as well anyways let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and look at the actual code so the actual code is pretty much the same but the engine model has changed a bit um, you know kind of because I split it up into multiple files so let me open up engine.c uh, here so you can see this is engine slash engine.c and inside of this uh, basically we have got all of the stuff that we had earlier however some of the stuff has changed so these are no longer static and instead of that we have got a uh, header called state.h so this is basically engine slash state.h and it as you can see consists all of the actual variables of the engine as external variables so you know some pretty basic stuff we have got a separate mesh generation.h and mesh generation.c for actually having a code to generate the meshes so apart from that the actual code uh, you know uh, kind of remains the same so now let's look at the actual animation so if i go ahead and open up uh, the state.h header file you can see that inside of here we have got uh, uh, you know we've got all the stuff that you'd expect and we've got a new uh, you know new structure here so this is a texture animation definition now all of the animations for the textures in doom are present as hard-coded arrays so we've got a texture anim definition here which is um, going to represent a single entry in that hard-coded array of animations and it consists of an start and end name and we've also got an indices for the start and end which will be the actual uh, texture indices so we've got the texture names and we've also got the texture indices which we are going to calculate when we are reading the files and uh, if I go here you can see we have also got an external array of text anim definitions along with an external size t for the number of text anim definitions and inside of engine.c we actually uh, define these things here so we've got num text anim definitions of this and this uh, I just copied the table for the original dooms uh, you know these are all of the uh, animated flats present in the original tombs these are uh, we've got the end name and the start name for these and inside of the engine initialization function we have changed a couple of things so first of all we set the number of text anim definitions to the size of the basically you know use the standard array size formula for that and then we loop over uh, each of those and we set the start and end to negative one by default and the reason we do that is because um, you know in case um, you know there is an invalid entry there we want it to be negative one so we just set that here initially and when we are re reading our flats i have changed the flat structure a bit so along with a data array of course we have also got a uh, character array for the actual name of the flat it can be some nine characters which is the maximum uh, characters plus the null character and uh, this is present inside of our flat texture structure and when we are reading our uh, flat texture so if i go in and uh, read the flat texture you can see here we are reading those and we also copy the name of the word lump into the name of the flat so yeah that's some pretty basic stuff so here we just loop over each of the flat and uh, for each of those flats we loop over each of the texture and uh, definitions and uh, if the texture any definition start matches the flat then we uh, set the start index to the current one and if it matches the end then we set the end index to the current one so you know pretty basic stuff to actually get that initialized correctly and apart from that one thing that we do is that inside of our mesh we have got a couple of changes 
So in mesh.h you can see that we have got a boolean here called is dynamic. Now the thing is that in order to actually change the texture we are going to have to modify the mesh data and when you are modifying data in OpenGL it's a good idea to mark that uh, a vertex buffer as a dynamic buffer. So for that we have got a boolean in mesh and if I open up mesh.c you can see that if the uh, boolean is true so we have got a conditional operator here if it's true we use gl dynamic draw as we use the gl static draw so for most stuff we'll use gl static draw but for the actual level geometry we'll use gl dynamic draw similarly if the vertex layout is full so uh, what we do here essentially is that uh, we uh, specify you know when we are creating our stencil mesh we specify this to be false because we don't want that to be dynamic but we will specify it to be true when we are generating our mesh so speaking of generating our mesh we are going to open up mesh generation dot h but first of all let's open up anim dot h so this is a new file in which we have our animation stuff so what it contain, uh, contains is that um, we define first of all the text anim time and this is calculated from the original doom so the original doom has had uh, each animation lasted 8 ticks and the original doom ran at 35 ticks per second so we just get that get that actual time in seconds then we have got a structure called text animation textured animation and this consists of the actual mesh that we want this textured animation to be applied to and we don't of course want the whole vertices of that mesh to be applied because you know we use a single we basically use like uh, uh, you know one uh, vertex uh, you know vert one uh, mesh per subsector so we want this to be uh, have pointed to the mesh along with indices for the vertex start and the vertex end so this basically represents the range of vertices that this texture animation is going to affect uh, we've also got uh, gl units for the minimum and maximum uh, texture here we can just change this to uin32 we don't really need that so we want to just change it to uin32 uh, anyways, we have got uh, this for actually this should be int because it can be negative one as well So we're going to change that to int so uh, this is for the minimum and the maximum texture that we want this so uh, It basically represents the actual minimum flat that the animation starts at and then the maximum texture represent the maximum one that the animation ends at so we just increment the uh, Texture so it's like you know kind of uh, flipbook animations standard 2d animation It doesn't actually have any 3d stuff or uh, complicated effects So we just increase the flat number until it reaches the max texture and when it does we are going to set it back to the minimum texture we have also got a float time here which is going to represent the time of the animation we are going to use this and compare it with the texture animation time to see if we need to update the animation and we have also got a uh, pointer to this struct here which is going to be used for you know actually uh, having this as a link list to store multiple animation so inside of this anim.h we have also got two functions one is the update animation which will update all animations and all mesh data and one is the add texture to uh, animation so we are going to look into this in a second first of all let's go ahead and open up mesh gen.c so inside of here we have got our generate meshes function just copied from the new one uh, nothing changed and the thing that has changed actually is uh, uh, the way we actually handle our uh, animation so what we do is we generate the mesh actually we allocate the memory for the mesh in the very beginning so that when we are adding our animation we can use this function for add texture animation and we can provide it with the correct mesh for that we need to allocate it in the beginning and what we do is uh, uh, by the way I had a little mistake previously where the texture coding for flip this needs to be negative start of y and uh, what we do is that uh, we compare the flat so when we are done with all the ball uh, stuff so we got we've got our floor texture and the sector uh, you know which is set to the sector's floor texture and then the ceiling texture as well uh, inside before when we are you know copying or getting our vertex data correctly so what we do here is that we uh, go ahead and you can see we set the start index is equal to vertices dot count before we start pushing the vertices and uh, uh, this start index will be very useful of course we use it in the indices we will also use this for setting the correct mesh so what we do is we loop over each of the uh, text definition so you can see we basically got a loop going over each of the texture definitions uh, here so we for each of the texture animations we check if our uh, floor texture of the current flat is greater than the greater than or equal to the texture animation uh, start flat and less than or equal to the texture animation and flat so what that essentially means is that if any uh, flat is for example between new cache 3 and new cache 1 or between f water 4 and f water 1 then it is an animated flat and we are supposed to add an animation entry for that and similarly for the ceiling so here for actually the animation entry we just use the draw nodes mesh for the actual mesh a uh, vertex start index is given by the start index that we have got and we've got the number of we know the number of vertices so the end index can be calculated as a start index plus the number of vertices and this is by the way exclusive not 
not included this last one and then for the actual start and end of the uh, you know texture texture min texture and max texture we just provide it with our you know uh, kind of uh, uh, the correct value from our texture animation definition for the ceiling texture it's exactly the same but we multiply by two when uh, but but the you know start vertex start index is start index plus number of vertices because that's where the ceiling stuff starts and the end index is the start index plus two multiplied with the number of vertices because uh, that's where the ceiling ones end here so if you look at this code it's pretty obvious so in anim.h by the way i think i should change this to int not size d because that's not really needed uh, anyways, now that uh, that with that done, we can go ahead and look in anim.c where the actual functionality takes place. And by the way, in engine.c, you must make sure to uh, at the end of your update function, you must make sure that you actually call update animation with the correct delta time. So in anim.c, first let's look at the text anim. I change this to int, so I'll have to change it here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and change this real quick. So what it does is that we have got essentially. Uh, a pointer to a flat anim which represents our actual uh, linked list of flat animations and then a pointer pointer to a flat anim which represents the one that we need to add to so in here we just you know allocate memory for a single anim we set the flat pointer uh, anim pointer to this one uh, we set its value you know the current value of this to this one so that our pointer is correct now and then we set the pointer to actually point to the next of this animation so that we can you know put the linked list just default stuff and we initialize the animation with the data that we have got the time and the next we just leave that at null anyways now let's go ahead and look at the update animation where the actual uh, heart of the operation happens so you can see that uh, for this we just uh, loop over each of the entry in the linked list of flat animations and first of all go ahead and uh, increase the animation's time by the delta time. Now if this time is less than the time for a single animation frame then we just continue we don't need to do any of this other stuff and if it is not then we just go ahead and subtract the texture animation time from this animation's time so that it get back to default one so we don't have to do any other uh, thing so you know we uh, for example this becomes uh, if for example if the texture animation time is one second and this becomes 1.1 then we subtract one from it to get it back to 0.1 so yeah, after that we actually go ahead and try to write the stuff. So for this we first of all get the mesh and we bind the vertex uh, array buffer. So we bind it VBO. After binding the VBO we use this function called glmap buffer. And this function returns us a pointer with which we can uh, read or write uh, the data of the actual buffer directly like we would do in normal with a normal pointer. So we get a mm, glmap buffer and that gives us a void pointer. In the end we must call glunmap buffer as well. And what we do is we loop over the anim vertex start index, the vertex end index, we go uh, over all of those vertices and we've got a create an integer pointer called texture and this needs to be a void pointer to prevent any weird offsets from occurring. So we just leave this as a void pointer but here we get converted to an integer pointer. So we take our void pointer, we add to it the i value multiplied by the size of vertex so we offset the uh, correct amount of vertices that we want to access and then we add the offset of the texture index so we, uh, that's what we want to modify the texture index so we add the offset of the texture index variable from our vertex structure so here you can see we've got this here uh, we add that offset calculate that offset and add it um, to our uh, pointer and the returning value we just convert it to an integer pointer and that gives us the pointer to the correct texture so what we do with that texture is that we dereference that pointer and increment it and if it's greater than the maximum texture then we set it to the minimum texture otherwise we just increment it and yeah that's that's pretty much it for the actual updating of the animation now let's go ahead and run that to see how it works uh, actually i changed the map uh, i'm gonna go ahead and set it back to even and burn to see uh, you know how the new cage looks in that map so i'm going to go ahead and run make as you can see I can go outside and you can see that this is uh, indeed some animated new cage. You can see that it's uh, displaying the animation at almost the, pretty much the correct speed compared to the original and uh, uh, inside of here we can see the animation here as well and it's looping around and it's working quite perfectly. So anyways guys this is going to be pretty much it for this video. I'll see you in the next one in which we are going to uh, do some other stuff. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people. And